The Curity Identity Server brings identity and access management together with API security, enabling organizations and their users secure access to web and mobile applications. Curity is used to logging in millions of users every day. For a user, it's simple and they won't even notice. But we all know there's a lot more happening behind the scene to ensure secure and seamless login. And that's where Curity comes in. The Curity Identity Server has three core services that handles authentication, token management, and user management. Let's switch to the Curity Admin UI and look at a demo. In the Admin UI, under Profiles, you can see these three core services. The centralized authentication service provides a secure and flexible way to handle single sign-on and multi-factor authentication. That coupled with the powerful authentication flow engine enables many use cases such as account linking, adaptive authentication, name or attribute transformation, and more. The token service is highly configurable. Each flow can be customized with the type of token, how they are issued, what data is present, and more. This makes it possible to fully leverage the OAuth and OpenID Connect standards to achieve a token-based architecture. The user management service offers a standardized way to manage users and simplifies access to legacy data sources. You can integrate with any user repository or database, allowing developers to work with, for example, JSON over REST instead of SQL queries and LDAP operations. Let's take a look at the authentication service. You can go straight to authenticators. Where in this system, I have an HTML form username password authenticator, as well as a web authen using a YubiKey. The username password authenticator has an account manager and a credential manager assigned to fetch account data, as well as verifying the credentials. These two are configured under the facilities menu where underlying components that are used by resources within the server uh, are configured. The authenticator also has an action set here. We'll cover that a little bit more in detail later. My other authenticator is a web authen type that's using a YubiKey and in here I've set the username password authenticator as a prerequisite for login and registration, meaning we can authenticate to register a YubiKey. We can also use it uh, for a multi-factor authentication approach where username and password is triggered first and then the YubiKey authenticator. There are several authenticators available out of the box. Here's a view of that. Uh, there are more available in the Curity GitHub repository. If that's not enough, uh, the product ships with a plugin SDK so you can develop your own authenticator if needed. Let's take a look at authentication actions. Again, several available out of the box in the system. New country, changed country, Impossible Journey, for example, are all geolocation actions. There's more here that can be used to enrich the authentication flow. The plugin SDK can be used to create small additional authentication actions to help fully solve your use case. Let's move on and take a look at the token service. I have an example client configured here. It's set to uh, secret authentication, but additional authentication methods of the client is also supported, like mutual TLS, for example. This is where we set the capabilities. Only the code flow is enabled here, but other additional OAuth and OpenID Connect flows are supported, including the Hypermedia Authentication API that allows for an API-based authentication integration directly into your mobile applications. Continuing with the client configuration here, we can configure what scopes the, um, the client provides. Set parameters such as time to live for various tokens. Configure redirect URIs. 
as well as assigning explicit authenticators used by this client. With the authentication service and the token service configured, we can test out the system. I'm going to use OAuth tools to try this out. Here, I'm going to run the code flow with our www client and request the OpenID scope. If we scroll down here, I'm going to force login so we get an authentication and no single sign on for now. We can see in step two here what the flow looks like. This is the URL triggered. So when we start the flow here, I get authentication, which is the username password authenticator. Now it waits for my YubiKey authentication. And then we're fully authenticated and I got an access token, a refresh token, and an ID token because we also requested the OpenID scope. We now switch back to the token service here and add a scope, commit the change to the system. We can rerun our flow. Let's request this new scope. Run it again. Username password authentication as before, YubiKey. And we can now see here in the ID token that I got my claim with a value. This is because the new scope we added is also configured to provide this claim into the ID token. Moving back to the admin UI, I have simulated a slow database connection to trigger an alarm. We can use the admin UI to view this, but we can also do that in the DevOps dashboard. So if we log into the DevOps dashboard, that can be used to manage parts of the token service like clients, scopes, and claims. It can also be used to review alarms. It's a drill down on the details here. We can see what type of alarm has been raised, the severity when it was first raised. Scrolling down, we can see all the resources that are impacted by this specific issue. And since this was a data source, there's a lot of resources that it's using this data source. Obviously, this information can be used to address the issue and also clear the alarm directly within the DevOps dashboard. The DevOps dashboard also makes available a um, user management interface. This is possible by exposing a GraphQL endpoint on the user management service. With this graphical interface for user management, we can add, delete, and edit existing users. Um, for example, we can go in here and assign um, a group to a given user. The different attributes defining the user has different properties. Here we can make the group primary and assign it that it's a type work and save the changes. And this will then save and store this information in the underlying data source that the GraphQL endpoint exposes. That was a short overview of the Curity Admin UI as well as um, a demo. There are several ways to deploy the server to fit your needs. Um, official Docker images uh, provided Kubernetes Helm chart, AWS AMIs, Azure ARM templates, uh, as well as a standalone installation. You can find a lot more information and details at curity.io, including a getting started guide. Feel free to reach out to info at curity.io if you have any questions.